Peter, the last, how long have we been on this uh, rapture, this rapture myth? It's got to be almost a month now, is it? Yeah, yeah, about four or five weeks. Yeah, I reckon we've been on it for a bit now. Yeah. We've only scratched the surface. <laughs> and we haven't been raptured. <laughs> true. It's true. Oh, dear. Anyway, what I, what I do know is I think uh, every single week we are going further and further away from Babel. Amen? Yes. Amen. Amen. Yes. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Uh, again, Amen. Uh, anybody have a testimony? Anybody want to share something? Let's put upon your heart. I can always share Just what's... to say that God has kept us for another week, kept us all healthy, and I praise the Lord for that. He's really, you know, this has just been an absolute miracle that He's kept us all so safe and so well. It is. So I praise Amen. 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 Hey, uh, I suppose I could reshare what Sister Carol wrote. Yeah. Mm. Amen. Well, that was a very good testimony, wasn't it? Yeah. She said on the email, she said, um, she says, Brother Gil, I trust this, this, for those who don't know, this, this is a sister that we know from the United States. She cares, she's quite elderly herself, and she cares for a husband who has dementia. Um, but she tells us when he listens to the word of God, he seems to pick up. So that's very good. She says, dear brother Gil, I trust I do not weary you with so many emails, but I've just finished listening to the last two videos on Daniel. So that was the last two weeks. He says, I must let you know what a blessing they were. The study has been food for my soul. You're truly a gifted teacher. I cannot find the words to express my gratitude to God for precious truth. I'm so humbled that God would see, uh, see fit to shine his precious light upon my pathway. I sat here tonight and all I could say was, wow, as you so beautifully and clearly unravel the teachings of God's word, what a privilege, what an honor to be able to sit at the table. I did not believe Daniel was speaking of Antichrist in the text, and I had some understanding of these scriptures, but the gems of truth that you have taught us are precious. What a blessed people we are. Uh, she says, um, the shadows, uh, I remember when I first listened to the studies on ordinances and your reference to why are people settling for shadows when we have the substance, the reality. Thank you so much for your labors. And I thank God uh, uh, for how he's using you. As you said on one of the videos, God, um, God has taken this crisis and worked for good talk about the coronavirus. Uh, he has allowed us to be brought together to feast on his precious word. We may be apart in distance, but thank God we can be united in the spirit. The services have been so real. I pray you can get a workbook together. These teachings are valuable. These messages are needed today. Well, I close. Please tell each one for me, talking about all of us here, I preach and love them. I appreciate and love them. My heart is so full. God is so good. Sister Carol. Amen. I tell you what, it's good to have some encouragement from time to time, is it not? It's good to uh, know that um, uh, in spite of what some people say about us, there are others who do appreciate and love what we do. Praise the Lord. Amen. Yes. Amen. 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 So uh, Amen. I certainly enjoy that in anyway. Praise the Lord. Amen. Uh, we, this morning we had Sister Anne uh, teach us about Jonah and... Uh, so uh, I kind of had it in my heart to have a break this week. Um, so I'm not really going to, because I really wanted to give the rapture thing a break, uh, even though I'm going to touch, a, touch on it again tonight a little. Uh, but but I'm more, I want to address how we are addressing the truth that God is giving us. Because I think that's important. It's no point just filling, ourselves, filling our heads, our minds with knowledge, uh, if we're not going to do something with it. Amen? Yeah. 
So uh, when we talk about the Amen. rapture, uh, it's probably one of the most popular beliefs amongst the Protestants. Would that be true, do you reckon? Yes. Yeah. I think it is, amen, especially amongst Pentecostals and Baptists. They just love the thought of being caught away uh, in the rapture, caught up to the marriage feast in heaven. I was actually listening to a song on, on Channel 55 just before, and the song was all about you know, going to the table and, and feasting with the Lord and, and so forth and so forth. Um, of course, then it is taught. Uh, then it is taught that um, obviously after they've had their feast in heaven, what happens then? According to the rapture theory, enlighten me, somebody. What happens after the seven years is finished? What's supposed to happen? The devil's supposed to be let loose, isn't he? Is it? Is the devil let loose? And what happened to Bernard? Your He's gone, Your it's voice is very down. quiet, Sarah. I can't, I don't well, know if well, I can hear me. That, uh, at the oh, now can. period, oh. that uh, everybody returns back to the earth, yeah. literally, to set up oh, a literal no thousand rain. year yeah. millennial yeah. reign upon the mm. earth. Mm. And uh, Jesus is coming as well, apparently, physically again. It's called yeah. his second coming. Uh, and then he will rule physically from Jerusalem. And, then, and uh, I believe that we have so far clearly showing, shown following the gold. What is the golden, the golden rule? Who remembers what the golden, the golden rule is? The Bible always interprets Bible the Bible. The Bible always interprets the Bible. Amen. Well, I believe that we have conclusively shown from God's word that the marriage supper of the Lamb is spiritual and not literal. And Amen. that we have been enjoying a place around God's table, the church has, for the last 2,000 years. Yeah. True? Amen. Amen. Yeah. Our first question tonight, because that's what we're kind of doing, a little bit of questions and so forth. So be ready to answer there, Bernard. Um, <laughs> Sister Lydia, Sister Rose. Our first question then is, what is on the menu? Yeah. What is on the menu? Can somebody tell me what's on the menu? How would we go about this when we're trying to explain this to somebody else? But there's no point uh, just saying, well, Jesus is on the menu unless you can explain on a first principle basis. Oh, okay. Amen? Mm. So what's on the menu? Where would you go and find out? Oh. Where, where would be a good place where Jesus spoke about eating and drinking? Where he taught us to eat his body. And Wouldn't that be about John chapter 6 area? Isn't that where he spoke about eating and drinking? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Spoke about being bread, talked about eating flesh and drinking blood. Who remembers yeah. all that? Yeah. That was in John 6, verse 54. Who can read for me John 6, verse 54? Whoso eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood hath eternal and I will raise him up as a cake. So he said he talked about eating his flesh and drinking his blood. Blood. And of course, when many people heard that, is they left in a hurry. Thought, hey, this is, sounds a bit like a cult to me. So, I suppose the first question is, what is it to eat Christ's flesh? Where would we find something on that? Where he said, I am the bread of life. Yes. Or what about John 1 verse 14? What does that one say? Because we're talking about Christ's flesh, you want to understand what's this flesh business? This word. Um, what's John one fourteen? And the word was made flesh, and, and dwelt. The word among, was made flesh. Yeah. Mm. And, and dwelt among us. To eat. Yeah. The what did Jesus tell us to eat? His flesh. The word. So what is he uh, saying that we must eat? His flesh was made, sorry, the word was made flesh. Amen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So obviously he's telling us to eat the word, is he not? 
Amen. 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 And then he talked about drinking his blood. Mm. What's significant about blood? What's important about blood? Remember, we can always Amen. look at a, a, a if life. we don't understand Christ's blood, life. we can always look at a type or a shadow to understand maybe what Christ's blood represents. And so if we went to Deuteronomy, say, 12, verse 23, what does it say? Deuteronomy 12, verse 23. What's significant about blood? What's important about blood? It's life. Um, it's, life. Um, it's the life. Only be sure that thou eat not the blood, says, the blood is the life. Yeah. Is that, that's what the verse tells us, doesn't it? Yes. And if, if you want to kill, kill, kill the life out of a person, just drain the blood out of them, no matter how healthy mm. that they, they are, no matter how good their heart is, Without blood, the body dies. Amen. What does Romans Amen. 8 verse 10 say? So, blood represents life. What does Romans 8 verse 10 say? And if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the spirit is life because of righteousness. Ah, what's life? The spirit. The spirit. Is Spirit is life, life. Yeah. because of righteousness. Amen. But but we have learned that the flesh is the word or truth, and that Amen. the blood represents life, and the Holy Spirit is our life. Does that sound right to you? Yeah. Amen. Amen. How did Jesus say that we had to worship God? In spirit, in spirit and, in and in truth. That's what he said. He says God is a spirit. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Amen. So the, the point I'm trying to make is, if you're going to try and explain this to somebody, you need to go somewhere down this line. Because now it begins to make sense, because now we are following the golden rule and allowing the Bible to interpret on our behalf. Mm -hmm. to show, so this is not my opinion or your opinion. This is what the Bible says. Mm. Now, it's not our word that sets people free. It's the word of God that sets people free. Isn't, isn't, isn't that Amen. true? So Amen. see, this has to be more than just simply filling your head with knowledge. You've got to start seeing this as a tool to use if the opportunity arises. Correct? Yep. Mm. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. So we understand then that the marriage supper is not future. The marriage supper has been a reality since when? For 2,000 years since then. Since the day of Pentecost, isn't it? Isn't, isn't that the truth? Isn't, isn't that true? Amen? Amen. Amen. So we talk about a marriage, this, this marriage business. To whom is the lamb married? And give me some proof. Where would you go? To ask the question. You, know, you say that that uh, that the lamb is married to the church. Prove that to me. How are you going to prove that? Because, mm. see, a lot of people say mm. that the marriage to the church is yet future. Mm. How are you going to convince me? I need well, my work book. <laughs> yeah, I was looking for the work book too. <laughs> What does Galatians it. 4 and 6 tell us? Who? Mm -hmm. Galatians 4 and 6. Yeah. This is, um, Talks the about Jerusalem of, being the mother of, mother of, mother of, of us all. Jerusalem is the mother of us all. Yeah. Mm. And then if we went to Revelation mm. 21, what would we what would we discover there? The bride. Verse, say, yeah. verse, Revelation 21, verse 2, Revelations. 21 verse 9, verse 10, what would we discover there about this Jerusalem? Um, the Holy Spirit. <laughs> coming down from heaven. Um, I will show thee the bride and the Lamb's wife. Yeah. Amen. And then, then it tells us, it tells us that the new Jerusalem or Jerusalem, which came from above, is not only our mother, it is also the bride. 
the wife. wife. Yeah. Now, how do we prove then that that marriage has already taken place? Well, we could go to what? 1 John 3 2? What does that say? Remember, we have to be, if we're, if we're going to be heirs, not ears, but heirs, we have to be legitimate. Yeah. Illegitimate children don't inherit. What does 1 John 3 2 say? Beloved, now are we the sons of God. But now are we the sons of God. So back uh, in, in, in approximately 100 AD, John is telling us that we are already the sons of God. Amen? Then we turn to Colossians chapter 1, Colossians 1 and verse 12. Colossians 1 and verse 12. We have to be legitimate children to have an inheritance, to be partakers of an inheritance. So Colossians 1 and 12 tells us, giving thanks unto the Father, which have made us meet. And that word meet's an in, a interesting word. It means to qualify or to make able to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light. Amen. Isn't that, isn't that terrific? Amen. Yes. And then Amen. Our, probably our next question would be, well, how does God make us able? How does he prepare us or make us to be partakers of this inheritance? Well, if we first went to, say, uh, Colossians 2 and 9. Oh, sorry, let's go to verse 8 first, because I, I, I do like verse 8. It says, beware lest any man spoil you. Now, that word spoil is a very interesting word. Mm -hmm. Um I, I used to cry. I, I, used, I, used to, I used to just simply believe it was to 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 make rotten or like like sport fruit, but it actually doesn't really mean that, and it's not spoken in that sense. It means to rob. It means to steal. It means to carry away as a um, as a spoil or a booty. That's that's what it's meaning. Is all right. He says, beware lest yeah. any man yeah. rob you, yeah. steal you through philosophy, yeah. vain deceit, yeah. and after the, the tradition of men, after the rudiments yeah. of the world, and not after Christ. Yeah. For in him, that's Christ, well, all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. Yeah. But you know, again, uh, be, because our King James is not the inspired word of God, in that it's a translation of the original, uh, the word Godhead is kind of not what they should have used. Um, the word that they should have used is deity. For in him dwelt the fullness of the deity, or God himself, bodily. Does that make sense to you? Mm -hmm. like yeah, I, 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 I used to say, for in him dwelt the fullness of of the Godhead body, meaning, meaning the fullness of the divine. But that word that was used, it doesn't even mean divine. Because um, divine is an attribute. Does that make sense to you? If somebody is divine, mm -hmm. it's an attribute. Mm -hmm. But deity yeah. is the very essence. Does that make mm -hmm. sense to you? Yeah, amen. And Jesus didn't have an attribute of God in him. He, was a very he, 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 he wasn't was. the mm -hmm. characteristic of God. Or like God, I mean, he he is he 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 is as the Book of Hebrews tells the express image of God. Amen. For in Him was God Himself. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Amen. And for that reason, Amen. in verse ten it says, "And you are complete." Yes. And that word "complete" there means made full, mm. perfect. Mm. Amen. Isn't that, that terrific? Yeah. Once you are born Amen. again and, and, and have God dwelling in you, he has made you to qualify, made you able You're... to be an inheritor uh, with the saints. Praise the Lord. Amen. But I just want Amen. to acknowledge this quickly, because as I said, I'm, I'm not really dwelling too much on, on the so-called rapture myth. 
I'm more concerned about how we are dealing with the truth God's giving us. Yeah. What are we going to do with it? Are we just going to fill our heads with more knowledge? Uh, or, or are we going to see this as a tool that we might be able to use in helping others? You see, um, if we think about that verse number 8 of Colossians 2, 8 says, Beware lest any man spoil you. Mm -hmm. Because you'd agree with me that many, 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 uh, and probably some even through not knowing, have been spoiled. Mm -hmm. They've been carried away. Mm -hmm. And they've been carried mm -hmm. away by the enemy of faith. That's what yeah. I believe. By the enemy of faith. What is John taking captive? See, the only way that you and I can be carried away once we are born again is to fall into unbelief. Yeah. There is no other way. There is no, once you have faith, you have to lose it. The only way you can lose faith is to disbelieve God. Mm -hmm. Is that true? Mm -hmm. Amen. How, so, so how are people spoiled? <laughs> What does John 10, 10 say? The thief cometh not but to steal and to kill and destroy. Okay, so how does the thief do that? What does he do? Mm. A false doctrine. Well, he has to create unbelief. Unbelief, yeah. Unbelief. Yeah. All right. But what causes unbelief? Remember that, that Paul already got, remember, we're letting the Bible speak for itself. Mm. And of course, Paul's already answered the question for us, hasn't he? He tells us how it takes place. What did he say? Tradition. Didn't he say that? Tradition. Yeah. Following yeah. after the tradition of men. Yeah. True. Yeah. yeah Following yeah. pastors blindly. Yeah. How many people mm. follow pastors and bishops, so-called bishops, blindly? Mm. They believe whatever mm. they say. Yeah. How okay. many follow Brian, uh, Brian uh, Houston without question? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Amen. Everything that comes out yes. of his mouth. Yes. Yeah. Even the cup. Yes. How many, mm -hmm. even in the church of God, do what they do mm -hmm. out of tradition? They follow ordinance mm -hmm. out of tradition. Mm -hmm. Isn't that true? Mm -hmm. it's, it's yeah. like our sister yeah. Carol said. You know, why would anybody want to practice... A shadow claim to have that which is real. Yeah. Amen. It's just, yeah. it's just Amen. plain foolishness. Amen. Yeah. So Jesus, yeah. so Jesus said, the thief comes not but to steal, to kill, and destroy. So he's coming to try and steal your belief. Mm -hmm. He said, But I am come that you might have life and that you may, and that they might have it more abundantly. Mm -hmm. Next question tonight is yes. who has come? He said, I am come. Who has come? Jesus is come. The Spirit of God. So somebody Jesus. speak a bit louder for me. The Spirit Jesus has come. Has come. Oh. God, Spirit. You see, Jesus. Let me, now, now listen to what I'm, what I'm saying. What, now understand this, all right? See, who has come is the Word of God. You see, many, many say, yeah, and say, Jesus, 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 I love you. But what does that do? People just, you know, today in churches, even tonight, while we're on here, there'll be other people in other places, you know, singing songs about Jesus and telling everyone how much they love Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, I love you. But it does nothing. Christ saying, the word of God, word of God, word of God, I love you. Now what are you saying? You see, I guarantee that in most places, if they were made to repeat that rather than Jesus, 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 yeah. the enthusiasm would not be exactly the same. Does it make sense to you? Yeah. See, people love Jesus, but for the most part, they want to push the word down. Yeah. Amen. But who is Jesus? The word made flesh. 
And then see, see what is what is Romans 10 verse 17? Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the name Jesus, 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 singing songs with Jesus in it. Is that mm. how we get faith? No. No, it comes by the word God. God. Because Jesus is the word of God. Amen. Is it ministers, especially yes. you know, when we go to, to Africa and so on? And we even have found it even in, amongst our own, all right? Is that people are easily swayed from one position to another position. And I'm talking about belief and doctrine and so forth, from one position to another position, and then back to another position again. Amen. <laughs> Yeah. And usually those positions are based on who they're listening to. Mm. True? And even some mm. base what they believe on, on how it might profit the flesh or mm. profit them in the physical. Amen. Amen. You see, I've seen people accept what I believe, accept what I might teach, and, and I need to stretch here that, or need to stress that what I do teach, I do believe. Amen. There are just some mm -hmm. things that I'll go to the grave with. I'm not, I'm quite happy to meet God on the basis of ordinances, quite happy to meet God on the basis of, of this rapture business. Mm -hmm. I'm quite happy to meet God on the basis of what I believe concerning end times. Amen. I'm settled on these things. Mm. I, I'm, I'm not swayed any other way. Amen. In fact, the further that I go, and I pray you're the same, the further we go, these things become more and more solidified in our lives. Yeah. Make sense to you? Amen. 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 I don't need a, a, a metal cross in my pocket. No. But he who hung on the cross is already in my heart. Amen. 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 But you see... Yes. Uh, I, I have seen people accept what we might teach or what I teach or what Sister Robin might teach, or, amen, and then see them change position again. Mm. And mm. then when you meet them again, uh, you can sway them back again to your line of thinking. Amen. Mm. And you're going to ask yourself, why is that? What is the problem? Shifting sand. What's wrong with the body of Christ? What's wrong with believers today? And of course, we don't have to guess. The Bible always has the answer for us, the golden rule. The golden rule. Amen? Does the Bible talk about being tossed to and fro? Yeah. And everyone it does, doesn't it? Yeah, don't the Bible is so wonderful in that even what we're doing tonight, anybody can do it. Anybody can teach this. Anybody can preach this. If you just mm. spend your time, mm. amen, and keep it simple mm. and realize that the Bible always has the answer for us. Mm. Hey, what's going on now? <laughs> <laughs> Whoa, it's all going crazy. <laughs> there we go. That's not even trying to call me. Can you believe that? Unbelievable. <laughs> Ephesians 4 and verse 14. <laughs> I had my computer was going crazy. My phone is going crazy. <laughs> <sighs> Maybe it was the word of God calling. Yeah, that's first. right. I was <laughs> you think the yeah. should be. She should not be. should be on here tonight listening. Yeah, that we should have What does Ephesians 4 yeah, and verse 14 say? That we have we hence be no more children. children. I mean, that we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro, mm. carried about with every wind of doctrine <laughs> by sleight of men. Notice again. Yeah. Cunning craftiness, whereby they lie in wait to deceive. Amen. You've got to be so careful today. Amen. Yeah. I mean, but, but the cause is, he says, because there's too many children. It's Naaman. It's Naaman cause. Yeah, I'm not interested in Naaman at the moment. Be no more children tossed to and fro. What is the cure for this? 
because there's always a cure for every problem god has a cure what is the cure what will prevent these children yeah. from being tossed to and fro what do you think doesn't the word of god say that we need to eat meat not milk yeah so so what do you need what what is the cure what do children need to do they need to grow up around god's word don't they? Yeah. yeah they need to grow take, up take responsibility grow up, yes. and you see to grow up means to put down some roots mm. and that's what it means mm. put, yeah put away childish things it means don't accept and believe what i believe but make belief and faith your own isn't that what putting down roots is mm. amen mm, to man. taking hold of truth and making it your own settling it once and for all that that is where you stand amen you see i can amen. convince most people concerning the rapture myth just by explaining what we did with that uh with the supper explaining daniel 70 weeks and certainly the sign of jonah now the sign of jonah is a lay down how simple is that mm -hmm. if we can't shut up the gainsayers with uh, the sign of jonah mm -hmm. my lord what 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 how, how are we going to help them any other way Mm. that is so simple it, it is it is almost like jesus gave us something so simple mm. that even a child could learn this to show which christ people are worshiping mm. amen now amen. i can show them line upon line precept upon precept here a little there a little just like we've been doing for the last what five weeks or however long it has been maybe it's been four or five weeks amen and you can do the same but what happens you know we've got everything settled everyone is comfortable you know our our um is that it again <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm texting at the moment. Tell him to stop calling. I've done that. I'm doing that now. Yeah. All right. Amen. You, you see, all, all this is good, and and especially in. when it comes to our, so like, especially um, those who are not necessarily of our home here. The moment they hear something like 1 Thessalonians 4, verse 16, for the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel. And with the trump of God, the dead in Christ shall rise first, and they which are alive and remain shall be caught together with them in the clouds and meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. Or even like Sister Rose mentioned last week, what about Enoch? And Genesis 5 and 24, which says, And Enoch walked with God, and he was not, and God took him. And of course, the insinuation there is that uh, he never died, that he was so-called raptured alive into heaven. So somewhere, this man Enoch is, is being kept physically alive. Um, and why is that important to Babylon? Why is that important to most of these Pentecostals and Baptists? Why must Enoch have been raptured and uh, uh, be uh, still alive physically? because he is said to be one of the two witnesses mm -hmm. in the book of the revelation mm -hmm. because they also want to insinuate that moses somehow didn't physically die because he's the other one and so but what happens when these verses are interjected into what we might teach what does it cause people to do confusion that's right it causes a doubt to creep in a doubt maybe brother gill is wrong maybe that sister robin is a false prophetess i'm going down that line because i'm i'm convinced amen 
<laughs> now you see, the moment we have doubt, something happens within us, within our mm. chemistry, within our thinking, and that we begin to see hindrances. Mm. All right, we begin to mm. see that maybe one mm. Thessalonians chapter four and Genesis chapter five. That's a hindrance mm. to what has been taught concerning the marriage supper in Daniel 70 weeks. Yes. Amen. Mm. See, that's, see, doubt Amen. causes hindrance. Mm. See, yes. doubt causes a, a change on how we think. It um, causes us to ask wrong questions. You see, we should see 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 and Genesis chapter 5 as being supportive, mm. not a hindrance to what we have taught. Yes. Does that make sense to amen. you? Amen. Mm. Yeah, amen. See, because I have settled in my heart that the marriage supper is spiritual, I have settled in my heart that the church is married. And I've settled it in my heart that Daniel's 70 weeks has been completely fulfilled according to Daniel's prophecy. Amen. Amen. So then yeah, when amen. I look at 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 and even Genesis chapter 5, I, don't, I cannot start with a mental uh, blockage that says, hey, hang on, this is a, this is a problem, this, this is a hindrance. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, I can say, hey, no, hang on, this is supportive not a hindrance. You see, hindrances produce, produce doubt. And you see, doubts, doubts are negative, if I can put it that way, in, in, in that they will cause me to ask wrong questions. Because what I'm doing now is, is see, see, the moment I, I begin to see a scripture as being a hindrance, to what I have believed as being the truth and that I have studied and, and settled in my heart that it is truth. You see, then what happens is I'm trying to pull something down. And see, the church of God is not about pulling down. Church of God is about mm -hmm. lifting up. Mm -hmm. Amen. You see, when I remain supportive and I see scriptures as being supportive, I may not understand every scripture. Mm. Mm. But you see, the enemy, see what the enemy does is once you have hit a, if you like, a, a, a golden vein of truth, that the enemy wants to do is to steal. He wants to rob. He wants to carry you away in an other direction. Mm. Yes, and he amen. does that by producing doubt. Mm. All right, so 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 he he throws one Thessalonians Amen. chapter four at you, and we've been in Africa several times now, and when we, when we've taught on say the uh, the, the uh, second coming of Christ and things like that, is it, this is one of the one of the one, one of the chapters that are always thrown up at us. Yeah, but what about one Thessalonians? Doesn't matter how much truth you tell them, mm. one Thessalonians becomes a hindrance mm. to mm. them. And so they ask the wrong questions. See, when we, when we see the scriptures as being supportive, what do you think that might produce? When we begin to see the scriptures as being supportive, you know, we've studied, we have settled things, we've put down some roots, and then we, cross, we come across some scriptures that, uh, you know, that, that may be difficult to understand, like 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, may be difficult to understand. How does this fit in? But if we are, see this as an, I might not understand everything, mm. but somehow 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 supports what God has taught me concerning the marriage supper and has mm. taught me concerning Daniel mm. 70 weeks. Has, you know, what does that produce? Well, number one, it produces faith. Mm. See, doubt never produces faith. 
Amen. And of course, because uh, one, once you're in doubt, you, you're heading down a slippery road of unbelief. And the second thing that it produces is harmony. Harmony. Because we believe, because we believe that the scriptures make music. Mm. That there is no contradiction. You see, I might have a mental con 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 contradiction because I don't understand something. But the scriptures themselves, from the book of Genesis to the end of the book of the Revelations, fit perfectly. There is not one ounce of anything contradicting anything else. And you see, once, uh, once I see all scriptures as being supportive, I begin to ask faith-producing questions. Because now mm -hmm. I'm asking questions not to yes, pull yes. down, Mm. I ask questions to build up. Mm. Does that make sense to you? Amen. Mm. Mm. Yes, amen. You see, if you get your head in the wrong place, uh, because that's what the enemy wants to do, he wants you to panic, he wants you to distrust, to, to get into a place of unbelief, mm. you'll start asking the wrong questions. Because now you're trying to disprove something. But we have nothing to disprove. We don't want to disprove the scriptures. We want to prove the scriptures because we and we must come Amen. to the basis. If we're going to do that, that all scriptures are harmonious. They fit each other. Not one contradicts another. Amen. So now we're asking questions Amen. to build up, because I'm always seeking harmony. True? And Amen. what is the best way uh, to go forward if you want to seek harmony? What 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 will be a good way to start? Find the mates in scripture or well that's good, yeah. I reckon that'd be a good one. Follow the golden the golden rule would be a good one, wouldn't it be? Hmm. But do you think it would also be good to allow the Holy Spirit to Maybe yes. Amen. pray, teach us. Hey, that, pray. That, might, that might be a good place, don't, don't you think? Amen. Yes. Pray. Amen. Amen. You see, if you allow 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 and Enoch in Genesis chapter 5 to produce disharmony with what you've already accepted as truth. What do you do with Daniel's 70 weeks that are to his people? What are you going to do with the sign of Jonah? What are you going to do with Hebrews 9 and 27, where it says, it is appointed unto man once to die, and after this, the judgment? Well, hang on. Hmm. Some, some preacher somewhere told me that Enoch didn't die. Hmm. Well, if Enoch <laughs> didn't die... We have a problem with Hebrews 9 and 27, don't we? And that word judgment means justice or sentence. Because when we die physically, we're going to receive a sentence. Either eternity with God in the heaven of God or the other place. Do you know that even Jesus, even Jesus had to go through the tomb to ascend to glory? Isn't that amazing? Doesn't that amaze you? Amen. We have all these people trying to teach us and tell us that they're all going to be alive and go to heaven, physically speaking. But even Jesus Christ himself had to die and go yes. through the tomb Amen. to ascend to glory. Amen. 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 You see, mm. hindrance causes disharmony yeah. and ignorance. What is, the, what is the meaning of ignorance? What is it? What is yeah. ignorance? Yeah. And a lot of people are ignorant. Yeah. Lack of information. Uh, yeah, you see, that's what I used to think. But that's not its biblical meaning. Or if you look and say um, Webster's Dictionary, maybe. That, that, that might, might be what ignorance means maybe now, but it, that's not what it originally meant. Okay. It meant to ignore the truth that is in front of you. That's what it is, to ignore the truth 
Mm. that is in front of you. That makes more sense. Yeah. Mm. That's why I'm telling you there's a lot of people in Babylon who suffer from this mm. condition. Yes. They ignore the truth that is in front of them. True. Wow. So next time you tell somebody you're just ignorant. <laughs> Amen. It's not because they don't have the truth. It is because they ignore the truth that is plainly in front of them. Yeah, that's a bit like Romans 1, isn't it? Paul is calling virtually everybody who, who ignores God as being ignorant because the truth is in front of their eyes every single day. Now, yes, that's right. Let's turn to John 14, verse 26. John 14, verse 26. Who is the Holy Spirit? Jesus Christ. God. He's God, isn't he? He is Amen. God. Yes. And here in John 14, verse 26, it tells us that he is the teacher. He shall teach you all things. Mm. And of course, we don't have time for it tonight, but if you look at verse 17 and 18 of that same chapter, John 14, that tells us that Jesus himself is the Holy Spirit because he promised that he himself would come to them again, not to be with them, but to be in them. Remember while he walked, uh, walked his ministry for three and a half years, he was with his disciples. But he said, hey, guys, don't worry. I'm not going to leave you. I will come again, but when I come again, I won't walk with you. I will be in you. Isn't that what he said? Amen. So the question then is, if God is our teacher, how does he teach us? Remember, the, 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 the best way to get truth and to settle things is not to just take what the pastor says, what the bishop says, what so-and-so says. The best thing is for God himself to tell you. So how does he teach us? Through his word. Well, Isaiah 28 and 9. Isaiah 28 and verse 9. It says, Whom shall he teach knowledge, and whom shall he make to understand doctrine? But them that are weaned from the milk and drawn from the breast. In other words, those who have decided to quit being children, decided to grow up. Wouldn't that be right? Amen. You must grow up. If, if you're going to get anywhere in God, if you're going to have any chance at all to withstand the thief, you have got to grow up. You've got to take responsibility. You've got to start taking responsibility for what you believe. You have to make a stand. You can't, we, we can't keep on shifting. I mean, at some point, you have to put a line in the sand. Hey, this is where I stand. Yes, yes amen, definitely. Yes, amen. I mean, and, and then God says, he says, I do it like this. He says, for precept must be upon precept, precept, upon precept, upon precept line upon line, here a little yeah, and a little. there a little. Believe it or not, it's a slow process. Yeah, mm -hmm. now, we have gone what, almost four or five weeks on this one yeah. topic. And some mm. people say, it's too long, it's too long, it's too long. But you know, what if I handed out everyone a test paper tonight and says, put your, put your Bibles down and start filling it out. How well would we do? Mm. <laughs> How well would we do? They're not, we're still learning. Do it. <laughs> and then, would, would, we, would, would we at least have the foreknowledge just to start doing things simply, line upon line, precept upon precept. You find that big tasks are not that difficult if you just start at the beginning. Isn't that true? Mm -hmm. yeah, sometimes trying, you know, looking at the end all the time, the end, like mm -hmm. if I look at the end of, of the rapture mm -hmm. teaching, man, it's a long way away, 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 because I know mm -hmm. that in the process, God's going to reveal more. Mm -hmm. So I just go on the basis that I'm in the now, in the present time, and I just need to do what I need to do right now, not be concerned about tomorrow. Mm -hmm. And we have to be the same. 
That's why if you're going to use God's word, you've just got to start at the beginning and just do it simply line upon line. And yes, it is a slow process. How does God normally work? Well, God gives us a little food, doesn't he? Yeah. <clears throat> and then what does he do? He gives you a little food. And what does he do then? Exercises you. <laughs> <laughs> he waits until you begin to <laughs> eat and drink his word, doesn't he? Yeah. And that usually works. God, God just doesn't come piling more and more plates on the table. Mm. You don't do that with your children. <laughs> you wait until they have eaten what's on their plate. Mm. And then if they're hungry, you give them some more, don't you? Mm. Isn't that yes. what Jesus said in Matthew chapter 5? Blessed, blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after mm. righteousness, for they shall be filled. <laughs> Amen. So once we eaten, God gives us a little more true yes in our Ooh. case yeah we have eaten the marriage supper we have eaten the lamb's wife we've eaten the present marriage we have eaten daniel's week we have eaten the sign of jonah Ooh. now what must you do Before you can continue, digest it. Let it digest. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Now you have to make right. your take own belief. Yeah, take ownership. That's what mm. you need to do. Not, not mm. my belief. I mm. know what I believe. But now you need to have that same passion for this truth and mm. make it your own. Mm. Mm. Because, mm. hey, I'm in agreement with Sister Carol. What God is giving us is precious. Yes. Precious. Amen. Yes. I'm with her. So very few people have the opportunity to hear what God is revealing to us. Amen. Amen. So to me, it is worth, to me, it is worth it for you to make it your own. It must be your own belief. It must be your mm. own faith. Amen. You see, the danger Very true. With, with a group like ours, because there's a danger. All right, because we do like to dig and we do like to study, is that we become gatherers of knowledge. Mm. Isn't that true? Gatherers mm. of knowledge rather than appliers and doers of the truth. That's the danger. Very true. And of course, mm. uh, then the danger is what? That rather than eating from the tree of life, we begin to eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Yes. We become just like the Greeks in the Bible who just mm -hmm. sought more knowledge and more knowledge and more knowledge and more knowledge, thinking that there is some kind of virtue in knowledge. Mm. But knowledge Amen. is only virtuous if you eat it mm. and prove it. Yeah. And that's going to take some doing. Is mm. it not? Amen. 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 And see, the way I see yes. it is, is God gives us, or God gives truth or doctrine for two reasons. And as far as I can see, only two reasons. The first reason is for life and living. Life and living. But I also see that he gives truth for death and blindness. In other words, God gives truth. God gives the gospel to separate. Salvation, damnation. Because if, if you looked further at, say, um, Isaiah chapter 28, you discover that he actually says to them, in, in verse 13, he says, uh, he says uh, but the word of the Lord was unto them, precept upon precept, line upon line, here a little, there a little. Yeah, he said, I made it plain. I made it simple. I did it slowly. But hey, that they might go and fall backward and be broken and snared and taken. You see, if you don't eat what God gives you, 
rather than being good to you, it'll be a snare to you. Mm. Does that make sense? To you or yes, not? Yes, amen. See, the way I see it, and let's look at something practically, is, is faith is like a building. And mm -hmm. we could picture, say, a big skyscraper, a big skyscraper, all right? What's the most important element of, do you think, I don't know, a 50-story building? What is the most important element of that building? The foundation. The foundation. The foundation. Yes. But what is so... Great about it, the penthouse. <laughs> no, I'm gonna say that. <laughs> this foundation, even though it is the most important element of the building, it is yes. the only element of a building you cannot see. Yes. Isn't that amazing? The it is the down. most important element of the whole building. By faith, you have to know that it's right. But you cannot see it. For all you know, the building has no foundation. Oops. So how do you prove a foundation? How do you know if the foundation exists? What, what is the evidence of knowing you have a foundation? I test it being tested when the, when the winds are hard. Well, you're going to start loading it up, don't you? You've got to start building yeah, something. Yeah, wait. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Jumping up See and down. Stands, the evidence up to the element. Yeah. of the existence of a foundation, the only way you know is by putting a load on it. True? Mm. Mm. That's right, yeah. And then when yeah. we look at the visual part of the building, all right, so we have this mm. foundation. We know it exists. But now we're going to build on top of the foundation. What must we do then? Well, we must build layer upon layer, mustn't we? Layer upon layer. Mm. Have you ever seen a building where they yes. started with a skyscraper at the very top and built down? Yeah, let's just put the, let's start with the 25th floor first. And we'll do the first floor later. Thank you. Yeah. Have you ever seen them kind of do that? No, never. Never, never, never. So, so if we're going to build on top of the foundation, we must build one layer at a time. Why is that, mm -hmm. do you think? Why must we build one layer at a time? It gives it strength. Level. Well, because it must always sure. be attached to the foundation. Mm. Test it because strength. it must always be attached to the foundation. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. You see, mm. many believers or so-called believers have beliefs that rest on nothing. Yeah, they've got a belief there on the 30th floor, another belief there on the second floor, another one there up on the 50th floor. Mm. Mm. There's what's no called wonder that they are sway from this to that to whatever. Because nothing is connected. Mm. And nothing rests on the foundation. Amen? You see, there is no connection. Amen. There must be a connection. Your faith must be connected to the foundation, yeah. Jesus Christ. Your faith must be connected to the Word of God all the time. Yeah. Amen. And then as we build, we must build like brickwork. You know, I can't remember. Mm. You know, if you just pile bricks one on top of the other, how strong would the building be? No, it wouldn't be. Wouldn't you know, be. You just wouldn't fall lay them over. on top of the other. You still produce the same wall. All right, but you just lay them one on top of the other. When mm. you lay bricks, how do you have to lay them? Interlocking. You have to be strong. Mm. Mm. You have to interlock them, correct? Mm. Mm. Yeah, amen. Don't you? You have to interlock mm. bricks to yes. make them strong. Mm. Well, that's how you need to build on the foundation. Your beliefs must interlock. And of course, if you begin to Amen. see a brick as being a hindrance, oof, we're in trouble, aren't we? Why mm. must brickwork mm. interlock? Because it must harmonize. Brick to interlock, 
if it's not connected to the foundation. Everything must be connected to the foundation. So what is true in Genesis must also be true in the book of the Revelations. What is true in Deuteronomy must also be true in the book of Colossians. Mm. Amen. Mm. What Amen. is true in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 must also be true in Daniel chapter 9. Mm. Amen. Amen. Because Amen. they all come from the same foundation. Yes. True or not? Yes. Or, Amen. Amen. They are, the, they, they are connected to the same foundation or we can say the same author. Amen. The, the author of, of, of Daniel chapter 9 is the same author of Colossians chapter 2. You know, Paul was not an author. He was simply a writer. John mm. wasn't an author. He was a writer. Mm. Amen. Mm. Mm. Amen. Now, concerning the author, I actually read somewhere that this author, this foundation, this word of God, it tells me that he cannot lie. Isn't that amazing? You read that in Deuteronomy 22, 23 and verse 19. Hebrews chapter 6 tells us that it is impossible for the author to lie. But I thought God can do anything. Why can God not lie? Why is it impossible for God to lie? You and, you and I can lie, but why is it impossible for God to lie? Because the point is, see, 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 again, my point is that if you accept that 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 is a secret rapture, then we have problems with Daniel 9. We have problems. Do you understand what I'm saying? So there's a lie somewhere because we're no longer in harmony. We now have disharmony. Why is it impossible for God to lie? Well, I think Hebrews 6 tells us that if he lied, he'd deny himself. He would deny his own existence. He would, he, would de he, he would deny that he is God himself. What did Jesus say in John 14, uh, 14, 6? John 14, 6. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No Amen. man cometh unto the Father but by me. Yeah, but see, see, you see, like when I read these scriptures, the words are very, very important. Very important. It doesn't say that I am a way or I am a truth or I am a life. He says, I am the truth. He's saying, I am the author or better still, I am truth itself. This very person he's saying is truth. That's what I'm saying. If God lied, he'd deny himself. Amen. You know, in the book of the Revelations, he's called the Word of God. He's the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Amen. See, that's why we always need to be very careful when we when we find things in the Bible that that we seem to not be able to fit. Is not to get into this hindrance mode, but stay supportive. Mm, mm. Don't think of disharmony. Always think of harmony. Amen. Amen. You know, rather, you know, rather than trying to, to try trying to disprove another portion of scripture. Yeah. Because you've got to be careful doing that. Because the moment you do that, you are coming against God. Because God cannot lie. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. You know, see, the problem is that the the moment you become into a place of disharmony, mm. you're going to ask the wrong questions. Mm. But if you see everything in harmony and everything fitting and that God cannot lie, you then begin to understand that, that what you understand as truth here has to be the same truth here. So 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 is not 
a hindrance to what we believe. It must be supportive to what we believe. Yes. Yes. Amen. Amen. See, that's the key. You see, amen. it must be supportive. Where amen. most people that I come across, I mean, they 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 go to one Thessalonians chapter chapter four, believing that it's a weapon formed against me. Because that's what the enemy would like me to believe. See, I'm, I'm not concerned about what these other you know, people who use it as a weapon against me. I'm not concerned about that. That's their business. All right? See, see, the aim of the enemy is not them. It's me. He wants me to fall into doubt. He wants me to fall into unbelief. He wants me to become his spoils. That's what he wants. Amen. Yes. And the only way I can contradict it, I might not understand 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, may not understand how it harmonizes with the rest of what I believe. But as long as I believe in harmony, that the word of God does not contradict, I stay in faith. Amen. And I'm going to ask the right questions. Amen. And I'm not trying to disprove anything. Amen. I'm just simply walking with God, aren't I? Mm. I'm not saying, God, you're telling a lie. I'm mm. saying, God, I just don't understand this mm -hmm. portion. Yeah, that's mm. it. it doesn't Amen. disprove exactly. anything. It's just that I don't understand. Yeah. And then as long mm. as the Holy Spirit is my teacher, my teacher, mm. he will mm. show me in due time. Amen. Because we've said this Amen. many times. Amen. Amen. That God has to lead us around Amen. sometimes, around the mountain a few times, Amen. to get us to that place where we are willing to believe what he has for us. Because if yes. he told us Amen. straight up, we would just say, oh, that can't be true. And so sad because that's how many of these believers are. The moment they hear something that might contradict something, they run for the hills. You know, and, and they're tossed to and fro. No, grow up. <laughs> Put down some roots. Start building something on the foundation. Amen. You start be like that tree. And holding true to that belief. Yeah, be like the tree. And true to that belief, knowing that it is in harmony with the scriptures, then you can start building on that. Amen. But you see, I find people who try and come against me and even like Sister Robin, no, she's been to Africa, and, and Sister Anne and others, amen, that, that, that the enemy is always trying to put a spanner in the works. He's always trying to yes. cause our word to be turned around or put a fear into us. But you know what I've discovered and, and I've discovered every single time? that God always has the answer for us. Amen. Amen. As, we close tonight, Amen. as we close tonight, because we have covered so many things yeah. over this period of time, because I, I really wanted to deal with this before we moved on. And as we move on, we're going to deal with Enoch. We're going to deal with uh, where dead people are now. Um, oh, good. Yeah, because again, if you believe in a rapture, <laughs> you know, you've got to believe in, a, in, in some kind of um, uh, holding place. Mm, um, mm. Because where, where are the dead in Christ now? Yeah. And so you've got to believe that they're being held somewhere because they're going to come back. So, you know, it's, you know, we have to deal with these things and we will deal with these things, but we cannot deal with these things until you do some things yourself. Yeah. Amen. Now, mm -hmm. it saddens me a little bit is that most people, when they hear truth, is they think that truth covers lies. Mm -hmm. They just think that they can dismiss a lie and just move into the truth. And uh, that's just not right. You see, what we taught, and I just want to use something very simple. What we taught concerning 
the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ matching the exact same sign of Jonah, most who even you know, get the leaflet you know, that we had and so forth and look at it and you know, with their minds, they work it out and say, yeah, that's it, that's got to be it, all right? You see, they'll just exchange the truth or they will, um, they will accept the truth and cover the falsehood. Mm. Whereas truth must replace the lie. Yes. Does that make sense to you? There's a difference yes. between Amen. covering something and replacing yes. something. Yes. Amen. True or not? Mm. Mm. Amen. Amen? So my question yeah. is, how do you replace a lie? See, a lot of people think we can just, you know, oh, yeah, that's, that, that lie has been uncovered. So now I'll just walk on that truth. The new truth that has been revealed. The only problem with, with, with this kind of setup is, all right, then down the line, another preacher comes with another variation of the truth. And so now he's beginning to move in this truth. See, covering lies doesn't work. What do you have to do? You have to replace the lie. But how do you replace the lie? And this is what you hardly ever see. You hardly ever see this. How do you replace a lie? When we were unsaved people, we lived a lie. How did we replace that lie? Our lives were a lie. How did we... How did we come to walk in the truth. What did we have to do? We had to repent from the lie. Yeah. And yeah. then we had to confess. Absolutely. Yes. You see, you never, ever hear it today where somebody says, you know, will confess their false belief. And then you wonder why they mm. never, ever settle. They never, ever walk strong in the truth. Because they're just prone to simply keep covering and covering and covering and covering. Or well, after a while, you run out of carpet to put the lie under, don't you? Yes. And there's only one way. We must confess. Amen. We must seek forgiveness. We made God out to be a liar. This is the thing, you see. Yes. Everybody who believed, you know, and I'll, I'll just speak to, you know, uh, Sister Florence, Sister Rose, Sister Lydia. Uh, I see <coughs> Bernard is there as well. All right. Now, if you're convinced right now that the rapture is a falsehood, did you repent from making out God a liar because maybe several months ago you believed in a rapture, you believed in this, you believed in that, you believed in a literal you know, marriage feast, supper in heaven? You can't just sweep that under the carpet. You've got to do something with it. You've got to put it into the sea. I forget you've got... You've made God out to be a liar. Yes. Mm. See, see, this is just the whole thing. What's the point of just going on and on and on, just teaching and teaching and teaching, unless there is some kind of repentance response? Mm. Mm. There has to be. Mm. Because the moment you uncover that you have believed something was a that you have believed something to be truth that is, that is now shown to be a lie. Mm. When you believe that truth, you make God out to be a liar. Well, doesn't that need some kind of response? Amen. Amen. Haven't you offended God? No. He is the yes, truth. Sir. Amen. Amen. And you yes. want something contrary to the truth, believing it was the truth. Mm. Even mm. though the truth was right before you and the word, you've got a Bible. Mm. It's not that hard if you follow the golden rule. So there must be a confession. We must seek forgiveness. There must be a repentance. Yes. Surely. How often do you see godly sorrow today? Amongst we who claim to be the church of God. You don't see much of it today, do you? Amen. We just, you know, no. we've got another truth and off we go. 
for surely there must be some form of godly sorrow and repentance. Amen. Mm. Amen. It's no wonder that we can easily change from one belief to another belief and to another belief. We're going to build on the foundation. Brick upon Don't brick. You. Interlocking. In harmony. Mm. It, was, it was Jude who said this. He said, build up yourself. That's what he said. Build mm. up yourself. On your most holy faith. Mm. That's what we have to do. Amen. We're going to build on truth. We're going to make truth our own. And the only way you can make truth your own is by proving it. Amen. You know, I, as I finish, and I, I know we've been going on a bit, but, but as I finish, all right, who enjoyed last Sunday mornings? Not this morning. This morning was good too. Even though, man, I wish I had my binoculars because then I would have been able to know what, you know, those, the, all those little letters meant. I just put it down to not having the binoculars. Anybody, anybody there who saw it as well? Oh, you missed something that's very special. The children had magical binoculars this morning. <laughs> I didn't have it. But last Sunday, uh, Ashton and Madison, they taught on, I think it was David, you know, taking down Goliath. Mm. And I, that cartoon that they played was just so... Good. So I want to finish with tonight, Isaiah 17, sorry, 1 Samuel 17. 1 Samuel 17. It says, and Saul armed David with his armor and put mm -hmm. on a helmet of brass upon his head. Also, he armed him with a coat of mail. Wasn't that a good thing to do? Was thoughtful? Man. Was kind? We would say it is the right thing to do. He was looking after David. He had David's life. You know, he was concerned about the life of David. You would think, would you not? Mm. Then you go to the next verse. It says this. And David girded his sword, no, it's Saul's sword, and his armor, and he swayed to go, or he started to go. And then it says, for he had not proved it. And David said unto Saul, I cannot go with these, for I have not proven them. And David put them off him. He took them off. What do you learn from that, brother, sister? you cannot go in somebody else's revelation or truth you can't you cannot warfare against unbelief and confusion in somebody else's belief somebody else's revelation you must seek the truth yourself it's like Ephesians chapter 6 tells us, we're not fighting flesh and blood. Amen? We are wrestling against spiritual entities. And it tells us that we have to stand good, our loins good with our truth. Not my truth. Amen. Not Sister Anne. Robin's truth. Yes. Not Sister Anne's truth. Not Sister Heidi's truth. Not Sister Lydia's truth. Mm. You've got to stand in your own truth. You've got to be good with that truth Amen. around yourself. Take the helmet Amen. of salvation and the sword of the spirit, Amen. which is the word of God. You must own the truth. It must be Amen. yours. You can't Ooh. start and you can't go. You can't yes. even start in somebody else's revelation of truth. You must stand mm. in and on your own truth truth amen as we close amen. one last question why did saul really want david to wear his armor because you know saul wasn't that kind <laughs> to david no he wasn't amen <laughs> you know uh, he, he, he'd rather see david dead mm. so why did saul really want david to wear his armor he was questioning his faith. It's in between the lines. Huh? 
He was questioning his faith. No, he wanted to take the he wanted he to did. take the um, glory. Oh, the glory. Yeah, you've got the it glory. there. Is that what you want to say? Yeah. He, did. Amen. he wanted mm. a piece of the action. That's what he yeah. wanted. Mm. Yeah. He did. <laughs> that he mm. might be able to receive glory or the praise of men. He was what doing Saul a Donald wanted. Trump. <laughs> yes. Yes. Yeah. Amen. You mm. see, Saul is a picture of the Babylonian preachers. Mm. They do everything. Pentecostals mm. and Baptists. They those preachers do everything for self glory. Do they not? Amen. They do. Mm. They do. Mm. They do everything. They're mm. just like the Pharisees. See, that, that was the accusation that Jesus made against those Pharisees. They do everything to be seen of men, mm. to receive the glory of men, but inwardly they are dead men's bones. Amen. What does the true messenger of God do? It's glory to what's God. The, what's, the, what's the difference between a Babylonian preacher and 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 a Church of God preacher? Why are they different? It speaks. It's glory. Amen. Well, yeah. one they know where the bread came from. Yeah, that's right. Amen. Number one, they know where the bread came from. Amen. That's right. Amen. Mm. And thus they give all the praise and glory to the bread God. of God. Mm. Amen. That's the difference. Yes. Amen. Amen. That's the difference. They know mm. where the bread came from. They know they didn't make the bread. Yeah. They know that God made the bread. Mm. And therefore they give him, the bread maker, all the praise and glory. As I said this morning, somebody mentioned Psalm 145. Let me just... Just mention just a couple of verses. Psalm 145, verse 2. David said, it, Saul didn't say this. David said this. Amen. Mm. Every day I will bless you. I will praise thy name forever and ever. Verse 3. Oh. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. Pra Verse four, one generation shall praise thy works to another. We don't see that much today, do we? Verse 10, all thy works shall praise thee, O Lord. Now, sometimes we've just got to look around, brother, sister. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. And maybe, you know, when you see that little flower, thank God for it and give him the praise. Amen. It's the little Amen. things, isn't it? Amen. Yes, Amen. It it's is. the little things that make the difference. Mm. It's the little things that turn your day around to something good. Amen. Amen. <laughs> mm. uh, verse 13, thy kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and thy, and thy dominion endureth throughout all generations. Kind of have a, you know, those who believe in some future kingdom, they have a bit of disharmony there, right? And the last verse. My mouth shall speak the praise of the Lord and let all flesh bless his holy name forever and ever. Amen. Any questions tonight? No, it's been a full day. Amen. Yeah. Now you see, the importance yeah. is, is, hey, we've got to watch out. We don't just become a knowledgeable people. Yeah. Mm. And you certainly can't cover lies with truth mm. amen amen you've mm. got to replace mm. the lie with the truth yeah. there's only one way you can do that amen you've got to get before god and ask him to forgive you yes. for having made mm. him out to be a liar yeah mm. amen do we have any other questions? Oh, sorry. I don't think we had any questions. Anybody have any questions? <laughs> Surely somebody has a question. Something to add. It's Saul here. He wants a bit of praise. <laughs> Sister Carol, I need an email. <laughs> I ain't kidding. 
Well, it's only because of God's goodness, isn't it, that, that you know, when he um, speaks to our heart about a lie that we believed once, like as individuals, that then you're able to repent. It's because of God's mercy and grace, his graciousness, amen. He changes our heart. Yeah, but in I your heart, that... you know it's dealt with. It's like you've got the confidence then because you know you've turned your back and you've got um, the truth that you can stand on that. Like you were saying, is that foundation, building on the foundation yourself. Mm. Yeah. Amen. You know, that, I think that's one of the biggest dangers we face in the church of God is covering lies with truth mm. um, and not dealing with our false beliefs properly yeah but doesn't that cause isn't that caused through vanity because we're too we don't want yeah. to be seen to to yes. think yes. we're embarrassed yeah. or silly or something like that we yeah. we need to own up to that and be yeah. grateful for the truth rather than um, despondent and hide the fact that we mm. that we didn't understand. We're, we're just showing that we've come so far and we should be grateful. And sometimes we're, we're, we'd rather hide that and that's vanity. Amen. It is. And yeah, hey, I'm just saying, that, I, yeah, yeah, I'm saying that, that godly sorrow, repentance needs to be a public display. I, I don't believe yeah. that. No. Mm. Uh, at all um but but as Before individuals God. as individuals mm. uh you can't just let it slip under the carpet no you've got to deal with it mm. or else you don't change mm. Mm. Amen. You, you just start having That's a true. form of religion or yeah you know, uh a form of godliness but when the pressure comes on there's nothing there mm. it doesn't hold together mm. amen yeah. mm. Mm. amen ah, i heard sister lydia then i think oh good she's yeah. arrived just in time she must have woken up. i put her to sleep <laughs> no i've had some trouble with the network mm. it's been erratic yeah, yeah. Yeah, we're glad but to I, 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 I have a comment. Yes. Not really a comment. I'm grateful for this, this last bit. I, I, I got it a bit. It was a bit consistent. The, the last part where you were talking about uh, uh, replace, replacing, replacing a lie with truth rather than covering up. Actually, I've not really been able to quite differentiate between the two in terms of how you practically apply it. That now, now I know this is truth. There are several times I've heard you talk about uh, covering something, putting in the carpet. So I've, I've really not quite understood how, like for myself, how can I practically now yeah you know t turn away so so i thank god that you you brought it out clearly that that it's it confessing saying for 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 example lord for for, for being irresponsible with mm -hmm. my life i i i, I responsibility of knowing your truth in another person's hands I take responsibility for mm -hmm. making mm -hmm. that mistake. By mm -hmm. doing that, I made you look a liar and misrepresented you because mm -hmm. on several instances I've actually shared that I can really, really right now, I may want to go back and say, I misled you here, I misled you on this message, etc. So I'm very, very grateful on that part where you've really expounded on on uh, how to to turn around, to, uh, mm. how to repent and and make things right rather than rather than sweeping under the, the the carpet because then then another person, as you rightly put, 
adapt it, can, can come back with another version. And if that sounds like truth to you, you can go with it. And, and that is what it all means about tossing. So I'm very, very grateful to the Lord that I know what I can practically do and rest my soul, rest it in my heart that I've repented and I'm right in God and can really build on these truths as mine and not say I was taught by some lessons at Kogma. I'm very grateful for that. Amen. 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 You, you've got to make truth your own. You, you've got to make the revelation your own. Hmm. Absolutely believe that. And I like in Isaiah 28, 17, where it says, and the hail shall sweep away the refuge of lies, <laughs> yes. and the waters shall overflow the hiding place. Mm. I like Amen. that. Well, it's kind of like the word, isn't it? The word yeah. will find you out. Amen. And <laughs> yeah, the word will the find you will. out. Waters can and be your tears as well. Also. Also. Mm. But the eyes of the Lord run to and fro. Mm. Can't hide from mm. him. Mm. Mm. Amen. Sees the hidden things. Yes. Amen. Well, praise the Lord. It's been, uh, it's been a good day today. Thank you, Sister Anne, for this morning. Oh, and, um, oh. We shall get together again on Tuesday evening, then Wednesday evening, and then we're back again to the following Sunday. Time is running away on us. Amen. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Ah, amen. Who would like to close in prayer tonight? Thank you, Jesus. Well, we're doing the Presbyterian thing again, I can tell. <laughs> Oh, dear Lord, we just thank you once again for this day of your word, your truth, being washed in your word, Father God. Thank you, Lord, that it is upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line. Thank you that you're opening up the mysteries of your word, Father God, so that we in turn can take them out to share to people that are lost so that they too can know the glory of your love, your light, your joy. We just thank you, Father God, that our um, brothers and sisters from overseas can have joined us tonight. Mm -hmm. And we just mm -hmm. thank you for our dear pastor um, who mm -hmm. has searched mm -hmm. the scriptures, Father God, for your truth again, Lord. Mm -hmm. We just thank you and keep us safe this week. Keep us strong in you. Mm -hmm. Let us have that word in season, Father God. And we just love you with all our hearts. Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 Well, thank praise you. the Lord, everybody. Mm -hmm. Stay healthy. Remember to ask Amen. God each day for your for your good portion. Amen. Don't forget. Thank, and give him give thanks. Him God's blessings every day. Bye-bye. Amen. 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 We'll see you all. Bye. Bye. Hey, see you, see you, Brother Bernard. Oh, he's gone already, is he? Gone. No, he's still Amen. there. Yeah, see you later. Bye. Bye. Right now. Bye. Bye-bye. Good night. <laughs>